Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in again. Uh, this is the second webinar in a series of 15 episodes in which uh, every time I discuss one image from my photo book, Why I Cry on Airplanes. Um, I'm happy that uh, you came back. I hope you saw the first uh, episode last Wednesday, which was about uh, Rhoda in Malawi. And uh, this time it's going to be, I'm going to talk about uh, Suhailin and Carla, and I'm going to take you to Managua in Nicaragua. So this is the image. Uh, some of you might recognize it. It's actually an image that was taken during the making of my film, Carla's Arrival. Uh, I have the DVD here. And um, uh, Carla's Arrival is, um, is a film about a teenager, Suhailin, who you can see in the image here laying on the, on the left, who lives on the street and she's pregnant. And the film follows them for 14 months, from uh, right before the birth, all the way until uh, the first birthday of the child. This is actually the morning after their first night. And the baby is exactly uh, 36 hours here. The baby was born on uh, day one. Uh, it was a cesarean section. You can still see some of the bandages. And um, at the end of day two, they were sent home. They had to already leave the hospital. Uh, she then went back to the park. And uh, this is after the first night. This photo was taken after the first night. And she lived there in a small community uh, of other teenagers and young adults. And a lot of them had children, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't exceptional for Suhailin to have a child. Uh, but if we look at the photo, there's a few things that, um, that you see immediately. She seems to be sleeping not in a park, but on the street. And that is actually correct, because right in front of the park, and I'm going to show it to you in this uh, piece of video from the film, Right in front of the park, there's a little covered area of the sidewalk. And so generally to sleep, she would make her bed uh, in that area, which was a lot more protected, both for the weather and also not so visible as sleeping in the middle of, a, of an open park. Era mi pensado por un bien de mi hijo buscar un trabajo y buscar un hogar, pues, un cuartito donde alquilar y salir del parque, porque no toda la vida vamos a estar ahí. So it was a really profound film in my career and uh, one that I'm really grateful uh, for. Very often it's because of the generosity of one person that you can tell a really strong story. I really wanted to talk about babies that are born on the street, um, profiling them like a second generation. So Suhailin, the mother's generation being the first generation. Um, that generation being generally uh, people who do have some education, who were born in a home 
situation in a family, maybe uh, siblings, I don't know, and then at some point left their house, so they are first generation street children. But Carla, the baby, was a second generation street child. She uh, she was born right there. She didn't have uh, all of this um, this reference of uh, being in with a family in a home um, and the kind of stability that you and I would probably expect for our families. Um, so I really wanted to make a film about that, and um, uh, it took me a while to find Suhailin. She's a really um, incredibly intelligent person and uh, very eloquent. Um, her uh, voice actually guides the film in voiceover, and uh, she um, she's very um, reflective about her own life. And it often takes, as I was saying, it often takes the generous the generosity of a person like her to open up their life um, to uh, allow you to follow them for, in this uh, case, over a year. Um, that uh, makes for uh, for a film like Carla's Arrival and everything that uh, came after it also so, uh, for her and also and also for me. Now, what's uh, good about uh, or what's interesting about uh, the book is that actually the two preceding photos are also of the same period, uh, the same 36 hours. So if you go two pages back, there's a photo of Suhailin uh, during the cesarean. Uh, the baby had just been born, was probably less than a minute old, and she's looking at it at, as it is uh, put into an incubator. And then the next photo is maybe 10 minutes later, as she is, uh, Carla has been uh, resuscitated, as is often the case with babies, obviously. Uh, they have to start breathing, they start crying, uh, cleaned a little bit, measured, she got a little, little tape around her, uh, her wrist. So I want to leave it there for this episode. I am going to be talking uh, later on, uh, not the next episode, but uh, a little bit later on, a little bit more about uh, about babies who are born on the street. Um, uh, that's actually another project, so uh, stay tuned for that. But I am going to stick for the next episode in the realm of street children, uh, which I worked a lot with in my career. And uh, the next episode I'm going to be talking about this small photo, that one. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so again, uh, after after this um, after this episode, I'll be available uh, in the comments section of the Facebook event page if you have questions about this story. Um, if you want to rewatch the webinar, you can always go to whyicryonairplanes.com and wait for the discount code, which is going to be shown to you in just a second if you are interested in purchasing a copy of Why I Cry on Airplanes, which hopes, hopefully takes you around the world and uh, allows for some traveling in the mind, at least uh, while we are all stuck in our houses. So thanks very much for watching again, and uh, I'll see you next time, I hope, on Monday, Monday the 20th of April at 4 p.m. Thanks.